We're starting off the list with the Vagongo statues. Vagongo statues are sacred wooden sculptures created by the Miji Kenda people of Kenya, made not just to honor the dead, but are also said to hold the spirit of the deceased within them. They are an essential part of the burial rituals within the Miji Kenda community, and one of the most important rules about these statues is that they cannot under any circumstances be moved from where they were erected. If this happens, it's a bad omen for the tribe. Droughts, premature deaths, the list goes on. This is because removing these memorial markers disrupts the spiritual harmony between the living and the dead, leading to a curse. The worst part about this is that it's not affecting the individual thieves or buyers, but the entire tribe or community from which these statues were taken. Some of these statues have found their way into the art market. They're often sold to collectors or displayed in museums both locally and internationally. Many argue that these artifacts should be returned to their places of origin and uh, they would be right. Sure, it's cool seeing these things in person, but is it worth tormenting an entire community of people over? I don't know, it doesn't really seem like a fair trade-off to me. Number nine, the Ring of Senecianus, also known as the Vine Ring. This is an ancient Roman ring associated with a curse. It's said to have a curse inscribed right on it. The Latin inscription reads, Senecianae vivas in diem, which translates to Senecianus, may you live in God. The curse is believed to have been invoked by a man named Sylvanius who accused Senecanius of stealing the ring. Sylvanius, seeking divine intervention, dedicated the curse to the god Nodens, a Celtic deity associated with healing and the sea, in an effort to recover the ring. The last known record places the ring at the Vine, a historic estate in Hampshire, England. The National Trust, which manages the Vine, displayed the ring for public viewing. The curse associated with the ring of Sicanus is thought to bring misfortune and suffering to anyone who possesses or wears the ring without rightful ownership. If this is reminding you at all of Lord of the Rings, by the way, you're not alone. The ring was definitely a part of J.R.R. Tolkien's inspiration for the story. Next up on the list is the Hope Diamond. The Hope Diamond is a famous blue diamond with a long and storied history. It is one of the most renowned gems in the world, known not only for its exceptional size and color, but also for the supposed curse associated with it. The Hope Diamond is currently housed in the National Gem and Mineral Collection at the National Museum of Natural History in Washington, D.C. The diamond has been on display there since it was donated to the Smithsonian Institution by Harry Winston in 1958. The story begins when the diamond was stolen from an idol in India, though. According to the legend, the curse would bring misfortune and tragedy to anyone who possessed or wore the diamond. King Louis XIV and Marie Antoinette are two of the most notable historical figures believed to have possessed the Hope Diamond during their reigns. Both faced tragic ends. In 1839, Henry Thomas Hope purchased the diamond and gave it its name. His untimely death led his family to sell the gem to settle gambling debt. That's jeweler Wilhelm Falls acquired the Hope Diamond and shortly after died at the hands of his very own son, who then went on to take his own life. Evelyn Walsh McLean, an early 20th century owner, experienced a series of tragedies as well, including the premature deaths of her son and daughter, and then her husband left her, went insane, and eventually died. At our number seven spot, we have the unlucky mummy. Mummies one of the staples of museums. This mummy is believed to bring misfortune to those who come in contact with it. It's said to have been the cause of various unfortunate incidents throughout its history. I'll let you in on a little secret. That's how it got the name unlucky mummy. It was excavated from a tomb in Thebes during the 19th century, and because the tomb was fiddled with, disturbing the mummy's final resting place, often considered a taboo in ancient Egyptian culture. Really, it's Probably taboo to mess with anyone's tomb, I think. But anyway, a curse was said to be unleashed. Individuals who were associated with the excavation or possession of the unlucky mummy have experienced a series of unfortunate events, like dying. There have also been accidents and financial ruin, which this mummy was said to be responsible for. The mummy has been on display in the British Museum since 1889. Number six, the woman from Lem. The woman from Lem is an archeological artifact, a small limestone statue representing a woman. The story goes that it will bring misfortune and death to those who possess it. The woman from Lem is believed to have originated from a burial site in Lem, Cyprus, dating back to around 3500 BC. The origins of this 
thing are pretty murky, which just makes it even more mysterious and eerie. It's currently on display in the Royal Scottish Museum in Edinburgh. The curse is said to affect those who come into contact with the statuette, leading to a series of unfortunate events, including illness and death. And just like with any ancient cursed object, the bad stuff started happening when it was taken from its original location. Accidents, financial ruin, and premature death have been said to plague those who have interacted with the object, which is why the woman from Lem has earned its nickname as the Goddess of Death. At our number 5 spot, we have the Catskills Crone. About 7 years ago, a pair of hikers were traversing the Catskill Mountains in New York State when they came across an old looking statue in a cave. The object had nails driven into its eyes and a rope around its neck. They decided to bring the thing home with them for some reason, and things got weird. They began finding muddy footprints that would randomly appear in their home, and at one point, they even saw the apparition of a ghostly hag. They posted their experience on Reddit, hoping to gain some insight, and one of the folks who chimed in, known as Newkirk on Reddit, is the director of a museum specializing in cursed objects, and this is what he had to say. Hey everyone, you guys might remember that about six months ago there was a post in the sub from a hiker who claimed that he and a friend found a strange carving in a New York cave. Long story short, they took it home and boom, bad haunting, poltergeist activity, apparition, and wet footprints manifesting along with a strong scent of pond water. A full blown haunting, if he was to be believed. There were lots of great responses in the thread, and after getting a few emails from friends who know what I do for a living, I logged in and threw my two cents into the ring. I'm the director of a paranormal and occult museum based out of Cincinnati, and he ended up sending the item to me. Half a year later, I can say with a good amount of certainty that the carving, which we've nicknamed the crone, is definitely haunted. I don't say things like that lightly, but within hours of the object arriving at my office, I'm fairly certain it pulled Jesus off a crucifix hanging on the wall, was the cause of phantom knocks, wet footprints on my couch, and we even caught it moving with a motion-activated camera. The last straw was when it tried to drop a television on my head. Next up is the Koh Noor Diamond. This is a highly famous diamond with a long and storied history. Originally mined in India, the diamond has changed hands multiple times over centuries. Right now, the Koh Noor Diamond is part of the British Crown Jewels and is set in the front of the Queen Mother's Crown. It's on display in the Tower of London. There are tons of tales of the bad stuff that's happened to those who have had this diamond in their possession, specifically men. The the diamond brings misfortune to male owners while bringing good fortune to female owners. It was in possession of various rulers, including the Maghals, the Persian rulers, and the Sikh Maharajas before being seized by the British East India Company in the mid-19th century. The Koh Noor was presented to Queen Victoria in 1850, and since then, it's been part of the British crown jewels. And number three are the Maori warrior masks. Maori warrior masks, originating from the indigenous Maori people of New Zealand, are traditional artifacts that hold cultural and spiritual significance. These masks were created created for the specific rituals and ceremonies, often serving as representations of ancestors and embodying spiritual power. So when these masks are removed from their sacred settings, it's said to disrupt the spiritual balance and invoke misfortune on the people possessing or displaying them. The curse is thought to bring bad luck, illness, or even death to individuals or institutions that have acquired the masks without proper cultural respect. Some claim that returning the masks to their place of origin is a way to break the curse. In at number two is the Black Orlov Diamond. The Black Orlov Diamond, also known as the Eye of Brahma, has a history steeped in tales of misfortune. Its origins trace back to India, where it was believed to be part of a larger diamond known as the Eye of Brahma, set in a sacred idol in a temple. Legend has it that a monk, in defiance of the sacred setting, stole the diamond from the idol, leading to a series of tragedies and untimely deaths. The diamond was eventually cut into three pieces to dispel the curse. One of these pieces became the Black Orlov, named after its owner, Princess Nadia Vegan Orlov. A series of misfortunes are said to have befallen its subsequent owners. Tales of people taking their own lives, financial ruin, and tragic deaths circulated. I think 
What I've learned from this list is that diamonds are bad, okay? Finally though, we have the cursed Assyrian stele. This is an ancient artifact that was split into two pieces. One piece was found in 1879 in Syria and now sits in the British Museum. The other went to the Bonhams Auction House in London. The British Museum had an opportunity to purchase the other half in 2014, but they decided against it. This lower half, which was up at auction, didn't have a whole lot of information behind it. It wasn't said how the stele left Syria, just that it had been gifted from father to son in the 1960s. So this led to some speculation that the artifact may have been taken illegally from its home country. Mm, I wonder if that's true. There's also a curse inscribed onto the stele, which may have also been a factor in not wanting to unite the two halves. The inscription translated to English reads, whoever discards this image from the presence of Salmanu puts it into another place, whether he throws it into water or covers it with earth or brings and places it into a taboo house where it is inaccessible. May the god Salmanu, the great lord, overthrow his sovereignty. May his name and his seed disappear in the land. May he live in a contingent together with the slave woman of his land. And we're starting off the list with Van Gogh's self-portrait with a bandaged ear. On the night of December 23rd, 1888, Vincent Van Gogh suffered a severe mental breakdown and cut off a portion of his his ear uh, with a razor blade. He wrapped the severed ear in newspaper and gave it to a woman at a nearby brothel before returning home. The exact reasons behind this act and even the sequence of events themselves are still a bit foggy, but it is widely believed to have been a result of his deteriorating mental health. He'd also been having an intense argument with a fellow artist that night. Van Gogh was taken to a local hospital in Arles, France, where he was treated by Dr. Felix Ray in an attempt to understand the extent of his injuries, Van Gogh created a self-portrait with his ear bandaged up. He painted this self-portrait as an attempt to convince doctors he wasn't insane and as a way to document his physical and mental state during the time. At number nine, we have the Fairy Feller's Master Stroke. This is a famous painting by English artist Richard Dadd. It took him nine years to complete, painting it between 1855 and 1864. It's a pretty spectacular piece depicting this fantastical scene with tiny fairies, elves, and other mystical creatures. Highly detailed and very intricate. At first glance, it looks like a whimsical fairy tale kind of scene, but behind its charming facade lies a dark and tragic backstory involving the artist himself. Richard Dad was a talented and promising young artist, but his promising career was cut short due to his his deteriorating mental health. In 1843, while traveling in the Middle East, Dad suffered a severe mental breakdown. It was convinced that he was under the influence of the Egyptian god Osiris. In a fit of madness, he believed he needed to take the life of his own father, which he tragically did. Following this incident, Dad fled to France, but was soon arrested and extradited to England. In 1844, he was declared insane and committed to the Bethlehem Royal Hospital, a psych psychiatric institution in London. It's during his time at the hospital that he began working on the Fairy Feller's master stroke. The painting's intricate details and elaborate composition really reflect Dad's obsessiveness. He worked on the painting meticulously, spending years perfecting every tiny figure and element. You can see those, those flowers in the background. They look like real flowers. It's insane. It's an amazing piece, but knowing the context definitely takes on a different meaning. Next on the list, we have Saturn devouring his son, and by extension, the black paintings by Francisco Goya. The black paintings are a series of 14 paintings created by the Spanish artist Francisco Goya between 1819 and 1823. The paintings are dark and somber scenes depicting intense suffering, violence, and just despair. Goya painted these works directly on the walls of his home sometimes outside Madrid. There was a lot of political turmoil at the time when he was creating these works. He also experienced a serious illness in 1819 which left him deaf, further isolating him from the world. The paintings in the series 
stories reflect Goya's growing disillusionment with humanity. He just became very negative. The subjects of the paintings are varied. He didn't intend for them to be a part of a series. In fact, they weren't even uh, supposed to be publicly viewed at all. It was only after his death that these paintings were lumped into a series and given the name The Black Paintings. Goya created them in the privacy of his home as a way to cope with his own fears and anxieties, a form of therapy really for him, allowing him to express his darkest thoughts and emotions. Number 7. The Woman of the Rain The Woman of the Rain is a mysterious painting created by the Ukrainian artist Svetlana Telitz in 1996. Telitz described experiencing this unusual, unsettling sensation before she even started working on this piece. She claimed to have felt as if someone or something had been watching her for about six months leading up to the creation of the painting. During the painting process, she felt a strange sensation, like her hand was being guided by some other force, as if she were not in complete control of her own movements. The painting, with its haunting depiction of a woman with a melancholic expression standing in the rain, quickly gained attention in the art world. It wasn't long before a series of disturbing incidents began to unfold among the people who had the painting in their possession. Several buyers reported an eerie presence in their homes. They'd complain of insomnia, having these terrifying nightmares, and very negative emotions that seemed to emanate from the artwork itself. Many of these disturbed owners were so affected by the painting's presence that they ultimately decided to return it, hoping to rid themselves of the disturbing energy that seemed to surround it. And legend has it that the woman of the rain depicted in the painting is more than just a figment of the artist's imagination. She is believed to be an actual entity capable of leaving the confines of the canvas. According to some tales surrounding the painting, the rain woman has the ability to manifest outside of her painted world, roaming about the homes of those who own own the artwork at night. And I gotta say, this is there's something really eerie about this painting, I agree. I just I don't know if it's the hat or something, but I yeah, I don't know. I don't like this one. I don't like looking at it for too long. Next on the list we have the Anguished Man. The Anguished Man is an infamous painting known for its eerie reputation and the urban legend surrounding it. According to the legend, the unknown artist who created the work mixed his own life fluid with the paint and not long after completing the work took his own life. The painting was then stored away, hidden from public eye, until it found its way into the hands of Sean Robinson, its current owner. Sean Robinson received the painting from his grandmother, who had kept it hidden away in her attic. And she would often share stories about hearing disturbing noises emanating from the attic, like wailing and crying during the night. After inheriting the painting, Robinson claimed to have experienced unsettling occurrences in his home. His son reported falling down the stairs, feeling as if he were pushed by unseen hands. Objects in the house would occasionally move on their own. He's Get rid of that painting, my god. And at our number five spot, we have Man Proposes, God Disposes by Edwin Landseer. The painting depicts two polar bears surrounded by the wreckage of a doomed Arctic expedition. One of the doomed Arctic expeditions we probably talked about on this channel. The title of the painting suggests that while humans can make plans and propose ideas, ultimately fate or a higher power represented by God or nature decides our outcome. The painting itself is not associated with any supernatural or malevolent powers, but there are urban legends and myths that surround it, particularly among students at Royal Holloway University of London. One of the, the biggest stories here is that students who would sit in front of the painting during an exam would fail it. Another urban legend involves a student who uh, took their own life after an exam, leaving a message that read, the polar bears made me do it on their exam paper. Number four, the Virgin Mary painting. There's a painting in St. Charbel's Church in Sydney uh, where a, a painting of the Virgin Mary seems to be moving its lips during a prayer one day, which uh, churchgoers uh, claimed to be a miracle. This would be a pretty creepy miracle in my opinion, the idea of pictures or paintings moving 
That's always just giving me the creeps. If this is indeed a miracle, kind of a pointless one too. I mean like what would the Virgin Mary making her lips move in a painting be accomplishing exactly? Anyway, there's a video of this moving painting online. I can kind of see some movement, but it looks to me like the video itself is moving. Everything in the frame seems to be distorting, uh, but apparently there were a lot of witnesses who claimed to see the same thing, that her lips were moving, so I don't know. In at number three, we have Portrait of a Lady by Juan Luna. Completed in 1890, the artwork features a woman said to be Luna's wife, Paz Pardo de Tavera, who he took the life of. There are stories about unfortunate events that occurred around the painting and to the various owners. People who have owned the painting have experienced accidents and even death. One incident involved its first owner, who suffered a tragic death shortly after acquiring the work. The painting then passed through a bunch of different owners, each reportedly experiencing unfortunate events, leading to the belief that the artwork carries some kind of curse. Said that Paz's spirit is trapped in the painting, bringing misfortune to whoever comes in contact with it. Next up, we have the scariest picture on the internet. So looking at this image, you wouldn't think there's much to it. it kind of looks like an AI rendering, actually, looking back now, but uh, there's an early creepypasta associated with this image that started going around the internet in the 2000s. There are a couple versions of the story, but basically this portrait is of a woman who supposedly took her own life. There's a version of the tale where she painted the portrait herself. Another goes that her boyfriend painted it. No matter what the version, the image is said to be so cursed that staring at it for too long can bring some bad stuff your way. Some say that after a while her face will start to contort, becoming disfigured and monstrous. Another goes that a man became so intrigued by the image that led to a bit of an obsession. He just couldn't stop looking at it. And eventually, he took his own life. Finally, we have Ivan the Terrible and his son, Ivan, by Ilya Repin. This is a painting created by Russian artist Ilya Repin in 1885. The painting depicts a dramatic moment in Russian history, capturing the Tsar, Ivan, the fourth cradling his dying son, Ivan Ivanovich, shortly after delivering fatal blow to him in a fit of rage. The painting by Repin shows this heart-wrenching moment in hyper-realistic detail, emphasizing the grief and remorse on Ivan the Terrible's face as he realizes what he's done. It's all in the eyes here, pure torment, like terror and regret. When the painting was displayed, people began to have these very visceral reactions to it. Some would cry, others would have panic attacks, some people would reportedly faint, and some would snap into bursts of rage. One story goes that a painter by the name of Abram Balashov freaked out on the painting, slashing the canvas with a knife while screaming, stop the bloodshed. It is a very disturbing painting. Those eyes, I cannot get over those eyes. Number nine, the Iceman. The mummy of Otzi, aka the Iceman, was found in 1991 in the Otzel Alps, Italy. It is believed that the Iceman belonged to 3000 BCE and his body was preserved because of the glacier that surrounded him after he died. However, soon after his discovery, people who were involved with his discovery began to die due to violent accidents. Forensic pathologist Rainer Henn died in a horrific car accident, mountaineer Kurtz Fritz died in an avalanche, and hiker Helm Simon died after falling off a dangerous hidden path. The Iceman then claimed three more lives in quick succession between 2004 and 2005. It's thought that anyone who comes into contact with the Iceman will die, and people believe the discovery of Iceman is a curse and has the power to destroy mankind. Now that does sound extremely cursed, and I would not want to go near that ever. Number 8. The Little Manny A three inch tall stone head is known as the Little Manny with his daddy's horns. Strange name. I know. After a cleaning lady stumbled upon it in a basement floor in Manchester, England, local scholars Tony Ward and Pat Ellison Reed explored the site and found evidence of a strange ritual. As Manchester Museum curator John Prague said, it was around a circle of candle holders, and inside the circle they found the remains of chicken and hair bones, ivory counters used for scoring at billards, and other offerings including a mother figure whose head had been broken off accidentally. Since the little manny looked a lot like a Celtic stone heads, everyone generally assumed 
costume, that's what it was. But when it was displayed at the Manchester Museum in 1991, a visitor identified it as Namali, a type of figurine from Sierra Leone. While Namali is known to bring strong harvests and other good fortune, the little Manny seemingly brought a fair amount of bad luck to its British handlers. Manchester Museum staff members suffered car accidents, bike accidents, burglaries, broken pant zippers, and all other manners of trouble. Number six. The Conjure Chest. The Conjure or Conjure Chest is a chest of drawers that has taken the lives of about 16 people. As the story goes, an enslaved man named Remus custom made this item for his enslaver, Jeremiah Graham, in Kentucky circa 1830. Jeremiah, displeased with Remus's work, beat him to death. Now, in retaliation, Remus's friends then cursed the chest by scattering dried owl blood in its drawers. But the Grahams used this chest and passed it down to their family for 140 years. And and death or injury came to anyone who stored their apparel inside. In the mid 20th century, Virginia Carey Hudson Cleveland had two of her offspring die and her husband die after being rushed to the hospital for appendicitis. Now a neighbor also died after an accident involving a weapon and all had used the chest. So Virginia enlisted the help of her maid, Sally, to undo the curse. They followed the steps that included procuring a dead owl and boiling willow leaves. Sally said that if she or Virginia then died, it would prove that the curse had broken and months later, Sally did die. When Virginia's daughter inherited the chest, she opted not to use it, which is why she's the smartest person in that family because why wouldn't they just get rid of it? Number 5. Scarab. Rumor has it that the Smithsonian is the home to many ancient Egyptian treasures and artifacts, and now were they stolen? That's a completely different story. But it is said that these items are cursed, and I mean with all those movies about Egyptian curses, this really doesn't surprise me. They have a scarab believed to be from King Tut. Now if you don't know what a scarab was like me, they were popular amulets and impression seals in ancient Egypt. There are many of them, and through their inscriptions and typology, they are an important source of information for archaeology and historians of the ancient world. Now it's said that bad luck will follow anyone who touches King Tut's body or anything in his tomb, and since this amulet belonged to him, I'd say watch out. Now in 1922, when King Tut's tomb itself was unearthed after more than 3,000 years of uninterrupted rest, some believe the pharaoh unleashed a powerful curse of death and destruction upon all who dared to disturb his internal slumber. So since this scarab belonged to him, it's believed to be actually cursed from King Tut himself so I'd say away. Number four. Black Aggie. Black Aggie is the name given to a statue formerly placed on the grave of General Felix Agnes in Druid Ridge Cemetery in Pikesville, Maryland. Beginning with its installation in 1926, it was surrounded by many urban legends. These included that the spirits of individuals buried at Druid Ridge would annually convene at the statue, that no grass would grow on the ground where the statue's shadow would lie during the daytime, and that the statue would animate itself during the night, whether by physically moving or by showing glowing red eyes. It was said those who saw her eyes were said to have had their lives ended by her or she would cause you to go blind. Oh, and one last thing, if you sit on the statue's lap at midnight, you will die in two weeks. So due to these urban legends, it led to much unwelcome attention towards the statue, and many people were caught breaking into the cemetery at night to visit it, and the pedestal was frequently vandalized. So in response, the Agnes family, disturbed by the attention the statue received, donated it to the Smithsonian in 1967. Besides these legends, there apparently are real stories about the statue taking people's lives. One man put a cigarette on one man put a cigarette out on the statue, which is just disrespectful to begin with, and he was later found dead due to him getting shot in the head. Another man was found dead at the foot of the statue, and no one notes his cause of death. So if I were you, I'd stay far, far away from Black Aggie. Number two, the unlucky mummy. The unlucky mummy is an ancient Egyptian artifact in the collection of the British Museum in London. The identity of the original owner is unknown, and this painting wooden mummy board of an unidentified woman was acquired by the British Museum in 1889. So the unlucky mummy isn't actually a mummy, but the mummy board or coffee lid of a high status woman who lived around 950 to 900 BCE. Discovered in Thebes in the 1800, the four young Englishmen who first purchased the mummy all died in unfortunate circumstances. The mummy board has acquired a reputation for bringing misfortune as it has been credited with causing death, injury, and large scale disasters 
others, such as the sinking of the RMS Titanic in 1912, thereby earning the nickname The Unlucky Mummy. The Unlucky Mummy has also been linked to the death of British writer and journalist Bertram Fletcher Robinson. He conducted research into the history of the artifact while working as a journalist for the Daily Express newspaper during 1904. He became convinced that the Unlucky Mummy had malevolent powers and died just three years later at age 36 years old. With a name like that, I'd stay away from it too. And coming in at number one is the Grand Grimoire. The Grand Grimoire, nicknamed the Gospel of Satan, isn't really a book I'd want to read, and I think a lot of people wouldn't want to read it due to this either. The book is said to be written by a man possessed by the devil. The 16th century book is known as one of the most terrifying occult books in existence. It contains dark incantations and instructions on how to summon demons and raise spirits from the dead. That last part might sound appealing to those who are grieving or suffering from loss, but this book's dark reputation makes it one of the most feared medieval manuscripts of all time. Even opening the book is considered equivalent to selling your soul to the devil. Now, thankfully, the Grand Grimoire is not available for purchase due to this, and I mean, who would even want to buy that? It's said that the original copy is currently kept in the Vatican secret archives and not currently available to the public, and I think that's a good call. Coming in at number 10 is the Megara Cave. The Megara Cave is located in northwestern Bulgaria. Cave paintings there have been estimated to be made between 10,000 and 8,000 years ago. The drawings represent important events of the society that had occupied the Megara Cave, such as religious ceremonies, hunting scenes, and depictions of deities which are unique on the Balkan Peninsula. The fertility dance and the hunting ceremony rank among the most noteworthy paintings. One grouping from the Bronze Age has been interpreted as a solar calendar. According to Alexei Stoev and and Penka Valkova Stovia, hope I said their names right, Bronze Age paintings of staggered black and white squares used to count the days in the calendar month permit to describe fairly accurately the number of days in the solar tropical year. So did this cave painting predict the use of calendars? I think so. The cave paintings allowed storing information about regional solar calendars, customs, religious festivals, and rituals of the society, which is the earliest representation yet to be discovered in Europe. Number 9. Astronomy. A new study says that some of the world's oldest cave paintings reveal that ancient people had relatively advanced knowledge of astronomy. According to the new analysis, some of the paintings are not simply depictions of wild animals, as was previously thought. Instead, the animal symbols represent star constellations in the night sky and are used to represent dates and mark events such as comet strikes. Researchers from the universities of Edinburgh and Kent studied details of Paleolithic and Neolithic art featuring animals symbols at sites in Turkey, Spain, France, and Germany. They found all the sites used the same method of date keeping based on sophisticated astronomy, even though the art was separated in time by tens of thousands of years. According to the study published November 2nd, 2018, the cave painting suggests that, perhaps as far back as 40,000 years ago, humans kept track of time using knowledge of how the position of the stars slowly changes over thousands of years. The findings indicate that the astronomical insights of ancient people People were far greater than previously believed. Their knowledge may have aided navigation of the open seas, the researchers say, with implications for our understanding of prehistoric human migration. Martin Sweatman, the University of Edinburgh School of Engineering, led the study and said early cave art shows that people had advanced knowledge of the night sky within the last ice age. Intellectually, they were hardly any different to us today. Researchers reinterpreted earlier findings from a study of stone carving at one of these sites in modern day Turkey which is interpreted as a memorial to a devastating comet strike around 11,000 BC. This strike was thought to have initiated a mini ice age known as the Younger Draws period. Number 8. Wollinga Rock Art Panel In Australia, this rock art panel contains more than 200 motifs. Stylistic changes in the layering of the paintings suggest that they were painted in the last three broad painting phases. Changes in social, political, economic, and religious life are often marked by changes in visual expression such as found in this cave. Although the rock art is yet to be radiocarbon dated, some of the layers are likely to be at least 3,000 years old and may have much earlier origins. The oldest paintings have recently been called well enough figures since this particular style of figure has only been encountered in this rock art shelter. These figures have elongated bodies and large round heads circled with headdresses. They have eyes and noses, but no mouths. Most are painted with white outline and black infill. Now what do these faces mean? Are they even drawings of humans, or are they aliens, or some sort of otherworldly creature? Seems like we may never know. Number 
seven, Cave of Swimmers. The Cave of Swimmers is a cave with ancient rock art in the Libyan desert section of the Sahara. The cave and rock art was discovered in October 1933. Now the drawings include those of a giraffe and a hippopotamus, and they're estimated to have been created as early as 10,000 years ago, but the beginning of the African humid period, when the Sahara was significantly greener and wetter than it is today. On the wall, there also looks like there's some sort of humanoid creature swimming. Physical scientists who have been conducting research in the area drew a provisional link between the proposed swimming humans and two lakes that are 124 miles south of the cave. However, Andres Bore, an archaeologist who is doing the research in the area, questions whether the figures are swimming or not. He believes that the drawings are clearly symbolic with an unknown meaning. Now, I'm going to say what we're all thinking. These are drawings of mermaids, right? Perhaps mermaids were around at that time and then they went into hiding. And hopefully one day, they'll reveal themselves to us again. Number six. Las Gil. Las Gil are cave formations on the rural outskirts of Hargesia, Somaliland. They contain some of the earliest known cave paintings of domesticated African arcs in the Horn of Africa. Las Gil's rocks are is estimated to date circa 3500 to 2500 BCE. During November and December 2002, an archaeological survey was carried out in Somaliland by a French team of researchers. During the course of the survey, the excavation team discovered Las Gil cave paintings that encompass an area of 10 rock caves. In an excellent state of preservation, the rock art depicts wild animals and decorated cattle, cows, and bulls. Now could this be them trying to honor the animals or showing us that one day cows will rule the world? Unlikely, but I'll put it out there. They also feature herders, which are believed to be the creators of the painting. Number five, the Great Gallery. The Horseshoe Canyon in Utah contains some of the most significant rock markings in North America. The Great Gallery includes well-preserved life-sized figures with intricate designs. This well-preserved site includes both pictographs, painted figures, and petroglyphs, figures etched in rock with a sharp stone. The tampered life-size figures lack arms and legs, but frequently contain intricate designs. Now, was the lack of arms and legs a choice, or did they have some people who were a part of that community that didn't have legs or arms? I'm not too sure. But other impressive sites include spring wildflowers, sheer sandstone walls, and mature cottonwood groves along the intermittent stream in the canyon bottom. Artifacts recovered from the site in this area date back to as early as 9,000 to 7,000 BCE. Number four, Big Rock. The paintings on the Big Rock near Okotoks, Alberta are estimated to be anywhere from hundreds to thousands of years old. The Blackfoot people use the rock as a landmark for finding a crossing over the Sheep River before European settlers arrived. There are countless First Nation legends associated with the rock, some of which were relayed through pictographs painted onto its surface. Now, according to local elders, one such painting depicts a journey. The arrows point in the direction of travel, north, while moons or circles tell the time it took to complete the journey. There are 17 moons in total, meaning it likely took 17 months to complete the trek. The symbols and figures at the top of this pictograph may indicate why the journey was made. This is essentially a map with instructions made out of pictures, which is pretty cool. Number three, the UFO. Chattisga State Department of Archaeology and Culture plans to seek help from NASA and ISRO for research on 10,000 year old rock paintings depicting aliens and UFOs in Chartama region of Cantor District. According to archaeologist Jay Baggett, these paintings have depicted aliens like those shown in Hollywood and Bollywood films. Located about 130 kilometers from Rapur, Baggett said the findings suggest that humans in prehistoric times may have seen or imagined beings from other planets, which still create curiosity among people and researchers. Extensive research is needed for further findings. Chitizga presently doesn't have any such expert who could give clarity on the subject. Now, there are several beliefs among locals in these villages. While few worship the paintings, others narrate stories that they have heard from ancestors about Rohila people, the small sized ones, who use the land from the sky in a round shaped flying object and take away one or two persons of the village who never returned. Now the paintings are done in natural colors that have hardly faded despite the years. The strangely carved figures are seen holding weapon like objects and do not have clear features. Specifically, the nose and mouth are missing. In a few pictures, they are even shown wearing space suits. We can't refute the possibility of imagination by prehistoric men, but humans usually fancy such things, the archaeologist said. Number two, 
Lasco Caves. Lasco Caves is a network of caves near the village of Montigna. Over 600 wall paintings cover the interior walls and ceilings of the cave. The paintings represent primarily large animals, typical local contemporary fauna that correspond with the fossil record of the Upper Paleolithic in the area. They are the combined effort of many generations, and with continued debate, the age of the paintings is usually estimated at around 17,000 years. An amateur researcher assembled a team that included experts from the fields of mathematics, archaeology, and psychology who analyzed the data, compared it to seasonal behaviors of modern animals, and agreed that the numbers represented by dots and slashes are not cardinal but rather ordinal, representations of months. As to the frequent occurring symbol that represents a Y, it indicates the month in which various female animal birth their young. The team theorized in the Cambridge Archaeological Journal that this mark may constitute the first known example of an action word, i.e. a verb to give birth. Taken together, the cave paintings and non-figurative markings tell an old age circular tale of migration, birthing, and mating of birds, bison, fish, horses, mammoths, rhinos, and others. Did these paintings create the first fertility app? I don't know, but it's pretty impressive that they were able to keep track of all of that. And coming in at number one is hunting paintings. An Indonesian splunker named Hamara was exploring the grounds of a concrete plant on the island of Sulawesi in 2017 when he found a cave full of art. The painting depicts two pigs and four small body relatives of water buffalo, as well as what appears to be eight humanoid figures that are two to four inches tall. Some of the human figures are holding long, spindly objects pointed toward the animals that might be ropes or spears. The humanoid figures bear usual features, including one with a stubby tail and another with a bird-like beak. Now, why would they draw humans like this? Were they thinking of what a cross of a human and an animal would be, like our present-day crossbreeding experiments? Or dare I say, did they come up with the concept of furries? Whether the art depicts a hunt or some other event, it's likely the oldest known story told through pictures and the researchers say as the mural dates back to at least 44,000 years. Number 10, Dybbuk Box. In Jewish folklore, a Dybbuk is an evil spirit. Supposedly, someone accidentally summoned the demon while using a homemade Ouija board but managed to trap it inside the wine cabinet. The Dybbuk Box came to light in 2001 when Kevin Manis purchased it and started having terrible nightmares. He then decided to gift the cabinet to his mother, who suffered a stroke the very day she received it. Not just this, but every person who ever owned that wine cabinet has reported experiencing horrible events. The last owner of the cabinet, Jason Haxton, found out the box possesses a spirit of a malicious Jewish creature called a Dybbuk, who has the ability to haunt and possess the living. Jason not only had nightmares, but also developed a strange skin disease and began coughing up blood. At that point, Jason contacted his local rabbis and sealed the Dybbuk back in the box. Jason later, wanting nothing to do with the box, gave the cabinet to Zach to display it in his museum. You actually may have heard of this box before, because in 2018, fans of rapper Post Malone claimed that his spat of bad luck was caused by his contact with the cabinet. Number 9. Charles Manson's Cremated Ashes Charles Manson was a criminal who created a cult called the Manson Family. It was active in California in the late 1960s and early 1970s. Now, the group consisted of approximately 100 followers who had lived an unconventional lifestyle and frequently used psychoactive substances. Now, the members of the cult believed that he was Jesus Christ and followed everything he did. Now, some members committed a series of nine deaths at four locations in July and August of 1969. In 1971, Manson was convicted of first degree homicide and conspiracy to commit homicide for the deaths of seven people, including the film actress Sharon Tate. When Charles Manson died, his body was cremated, and some of his followers actually took fragments of his ashes to keep as a memento. This led to such creations as the Ryan Almighty blood paintings of Manson, in which the eyes were filled in with Charles's own cremains. Painted in Ryan's own blood, the artistry has to be appreciated, but the morbidness of the painting with the cremated ashes included makes for a unique piece, to say the least. This very painting is on display at the museum, along with other Charles Manson memorabilia, including a prison-worn outfit, Manson's own tea TV, and even more ashes in a display case along with Manson's dentures. Number 8. Love Ranch Bed Zach acquired the bed and bedroom furniture of Bunny Ranch and Love Ranch owner Dennis Hoff, which eerily includes the mattress Dennis died on. Dennis died in that room of a heart attack on October 16th, 2018. He was 72 years old. Now this just so happens to be the same mattress Lamar Odom was on when he overdosed three years prior in October 2015. Safe to say a lot of bad things have happened 
blamed on that mattress. Zach says they never swapped out the mattress in the Love Ranch room, and now folks at the legal Nevada brothel believe it's cursed. Zach said that he was told that the bed was cursed, so of course he wanted to add it to his collection. Number 7. Dr. Jack Kevorkian's Van Jack Kevorkian publicly championed a terminal patient's right to die by physician-assisted suicide embodied in his quote, dying is not a crime. It's said that he assisted at least 130 patients in ending their lives. For this, he was convicted of homicide in 1999 and was often portrayed in the media with the name of Dr. Death. Jack, who died in 2011, lived out of a van for periods of his life and used it to carry out some of his crimes. Zach found this van and paid $32,500 for the rusty 1968 Volkswagen van, which has been parked in storage at the American Jewelry and Loan Pawn Shop on 8 Mile in Detroit. Now it sits at his museum for all to see. Number 6. Demon House Staircase From a very intriguing standalone documentary of the same name, The Demon House was an investigation undertaken by Zach and the team at a home in Indiana where the family claimed that numerous members of the family had been possessed by a spirit. The local police department and even social services within the local area were convinced that the house was some way haunted. From footsteps in the corridor to full on body possession, the demon house creeped Zach and the team out more than anything we've witnessed on the show before. Now Zach actually purchased the home for himself for investigations back in 2014 and used it to film the documentary before bulldozing it entirely in 2016, taking pieces of it, including the staircase, back to the haunted museum. Number 5. The House Itself The mansion housing the museum has reportedly been haunted for years. It was built in 1938 and owned by businessman Cyril S. Wenger and rumor has it, dark rituals took place in the basement in the 1970s. There was a pentagram found in the basement and this is where supposedly a young boy was sacrificed. It is some kind of satanic altar supposedly to invoke the spirits down there and it's an extremely evil place in the house. During the tour they try to usher people through the basement as quickly as possible because it's so scary. Now the mansion at one point was turned into a law firm where strange occurrences continued before the place was purchased by Zach and was eventually converted into Zach Bagans the Haunted Museum. Number 4. Bella Lugosi Mirror Hollywood star and Dracula actor Bella Lugosi is one of the world's most famous horror actors, but did you know that he once owned a mirror believed to be haunted? It is reported that he was obsessed with practicing a form of clairvoyance which would involve him staring into inanimate objects to try and conjure messages from spirits. One such object reportedly used by the actor for such practice was a mirror, which hung in Bella's Hollywood Hills home. Zach was given the mirror by the niece of lawyer and B-movie producer Frank Saltry, who formerly lived in the home once owned by Bella. However, Frank tragically died at the home in 1982, and following his death, the producer's family inherited the mirror. Soon after bringing the mirror home though, the family began to notice that paranormal activity began to occur in their own home. Believing Bella's own practices and her uncle's death to have affected the mirror, she later took the object to paranormal investigator Zach. After taking the mirror from Frank's niece, the star also encountered his own paranormal experiences around the mirror when he investigated his own museum for a 2017 episode of Ghost Adventures. This included seeing a ball of light that appeared on the opposite wall of the mirror, which Zach said traveled across the room and went inside the mirror. Now that sounds extremely haunted to me. Number 3. Ed Jean Cauldron Ed Jean ended the lives of people and was a grave robber. He created costumes, furniture, and other keepsakes from the bodies of his victims. A police raid on his house turned up masks literally made from human faces, a belt of nipples, and a corset created from a skin torso. To be clear, he never wore these costumes when ending people's lives, instead he donned them in the privacy of his home. Now some masks appeared to be mummified, almost dried out, while others were more carefully preserved. A few had lipstick applied and looked more lifelike, and four had been stuffed with paper and hung on the wall of his bedroom, almost like hunting trophies. Leatherface from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Buffalo Bill from The Silence of the Lambs, and Norman Bates were all based on Ed. Zach paid $2,800 at an auction to take possession of the 25 gallon cauldron Ed used to discard his victims' entrails when he gutted them. The thing had been sitting in a Wisconsin woman's home, used as a flower pot ever since Ed's 1984 death in prison. When she died, her son wisely believed the cauldron was cursed and wanted it gone, so now it's Zach's. Number 2. Peggy the Doll Warner
morning, looking into this doll's eyes can cause you to have health issues or even get haunted. Please watch at your own risk. Now Peggy the doll is a three foot tall doll that has a blonde hair bob with glossy blue eyes and is considered to be the most haunted and dangerous doll in the world. After being purchased at a car boot sale, the owner began having nightmares and felt as though she was being haunted by the doll. She contacted Jane Harris, a paranormal and haunted doll investigator, and eventually sent the doll to her. Jane and her team of psychics began working with the doll, running experiments, or having paranormal sessions with it, and began posting photos and videos of the doll online. That is when she began to receive comments from people who had seen the video, and immediately after viewing, began to have chest pain, nausea, and or crippling headaches. So yes, she can haunt you through a screen. Jane has come to the conclusion that the doll is possessed by the spirit of a woman who was born in 1946 who died of a chest related condition like asthma. Now Peggy's picture alone is said to cause anxiety, heart attacks, and headaches. Now Peggy is treated with extreme respect in the museum. She has her own room and a spirit box which is linked up to the room so guests can interact with her if they wish. Many guests have received very strange feedback through the spirit box including being called out by name and conscious replies to certain questions asked on her guided tours. Now looking up information about Peggy was absolutely terrifying and Peggy if I accidentally looked into your eyes I am so Sorry. And coming in at number one is the devil's chair. Ed and Lorraine Warren helped exercise a possessed boy named David Glatzel in the early 80s. They did many exorcisms on David, and Lorraine said that David levitated, ceased breathing for a time, and even demonstrated the supernatural ability of precognition. During his exorcisms, there was also a rocking chair in the room that would allegedly rock on its own, levitate, and even vanish and reappear. David and Lorraine also claimed to have seen the devil sitting in it. Now, Zach purchased the chair to be on display in his museum, but he had been forced to shut down his haunted rocking chair exhibit. Why? Well, Zach and his friend noticed the door to the chair's room slowly creaked open all by itself. Zach also says a light focused on the chair went out when a power cord was mysteriously yanked out of the wall. Two hours later, he said a woman collapsed, began bawling, and asked, what is happening to me? Shortly thereafter, she fell unconscious, according to Zach, who adds that the woman was upstairs directly above the rocking chair exhibit. It. Later, Zach said five of his tour guides throughout the museum started crying uncontrollably. After just a few tours on opening night, the stress was too much for Zach and it forced him to shut it down altogether for the night. For now, Zach says the haunted rocking chair exhibit is closed until further notice, but in the middle of 2022, YouTubers Sam and Colby, who are paranormal investigators that I love, by the way, were given special permission to not only see or touch the chair, but to sit on it. The results were insane, and let me just say, they are braver than me because Wow. <laughs> Number 10, Memorial. Memorial is the name of this painting by Benton Spruance made in 1951. Now just looking at it makes me feel like it's haunted. I don't need any backstory here. The painting is of head, skulls, and creepy masks on what appears to be a stake in the ground, and there's a cross in the background. It's just unsettling, and one of those faces has black eyes and only two teeth, and I do not like it. Benton was known for making creepy work, so it's not shocking that he came up with this. A number of guests and staff believe that this painting is haunted, and I believe them. Looking at the painting gives people an uneasy feeling, and apparently there was a cold spot on the painting, which was strange because it was never near a vent or window that could cause a breeze. The painting was a gift from John B. Turner, and I suspect that he knew it was haunted and wanted to get rid of it. Number 9. Scarab Rumor has it that the Smithsonian is home to many ancient Egypt treasures and artifacts. Now, were they stolen? That's a completely different story, but it's said that these items are cursed. With all those movies about Egyptian curses, this really doesn't surprise me. They have a scarab believed to be from King Tut. If you don't know what a scarab was like me, they were popular amulets and impression seals in ancient Egypt. There are many of them, and through their inscriptions and typology, they are an important source source of information for archaeologists and historians of the ancient world. Now it's said that bad luck will follow anyone who touches King Tut's body or anything in his tomb, and since this belonged to him, I'd say watch out. 
1922, when King Tut's tomb itself was unearthed after more than 3,000 years of uninterrupted rest, some believe the pharaoh unleashed a powerful curse of death and destruction upon all who dared to disturb his eternal slumber. So since this scarab belonged to him, it's believed to actually be cursed from King Tut himself, so I'd stay away. Number 8. Mummified Cat Head Yep, you heard that right, a mummified cat head. Only the head though, we don't know where the rest of the body is. It's a cat from 332 to 30 BC, it's wrapped in linen and the ears are elaborately painted and modeled on the face of this cat mummy to give it the look of a real cat. The head contains a cat skull and it was originally part of a complete cat mummy. Many workers have claimed to have seen a cat apparition move around this display. It's also seen around the halls and other exhibits as well. Now it's probably just trying to find the rest of its body and doesn't mean any harm, but I feel like having a ghost cat though would be fun. Number 7. The Weeping Woman the Weeping Woman, aka La Llorona, is a legend that has a wide variety of details and versions. In a typical version of the legend, a beautiful woman named Maria marries a rich man to whom she bears two children with. One day, Maria sees her husband with another woman, and in a fit of blind wage, she drowns their offspring in a river, which she immediately regrets. Unable to save them and consumed by guilt, she drowns herself as well, but is unable to enter the afterlife, forced to be in purgatory and roam this earth until she finds her offspring. The legend of La Llorona is deeply rooted in Mexican popular culture. It's said that if you hear her cries being distant, it means she's close, and if they seem close, that she's far. She usually has a loud cry, kind of like a coyote or owl. Now, the Smithsonian has this terrifying weeping woman doll, which currently isn't on display anymore, and you know, I wonder why. Apparently, it was freaking out too many guests out, and just by looking at it, I can see why. It's also been reported that staff have heard sounds of weeping coming from the doll at night. Some people believe that the weeping lady is trapped in that doll, and all I gotta say is that doll is in the wrong museum, it needs to go join Annabelle and other cursed objects in Ed and Lorraine Warren's museum. Number 6. The Creeping Doll the Creeping Doll, which is a creepy doll, is a prototype for a doll that could crawl on its own. It was invented in 1871 by George P. Clark. The goal of the doll was to make it crawl exactly like human babies do. The doll's arm, legs, and heads were all made of plaster and were painted. They were then attached to a brass clockwork body and moved along with the gears. To be honest, it looks like that creepy robotic baby like the one in Toy Story Sid has. Does anyone else see the resemblance? Now, with this just being creepy already, it gets even creepier. Staff have seen this doll creep forward on its own, and others have heard the sounds of children laughing and crying near it. Although I think what's truly haunting about this is how many times I've said the word creepy. Number 5. Mary Todd Lincoln's Dress Mary Todd Lincoln served as the First Lady of the United States from 1861 until the death of her husband, President Abraham Lincoln, in 1865. Mary Todd married Abraham Lincoln on November 4, 1842 at her sister Elizabeth's home in Springfield, Illinois. She absolutely loved her husband and was completely distraught when he passed away. She was in mourning for a long time and stayed in widow's clothes up until her own death. Due to this, she never wore any of her other dresses. She had a beautiful purple dress lined with lace, and she gave this dress plus others to her family members. The purple dress was given to her cousin, Elizabeth Todd Grimsley. In 1916, Elizabeth's son sold the dress to the Smithsonian, where it is today. It was to be a part of the First Lady's collection. Now, it's said though that this isn't any ordinary dress. Oh no, it is said that the dress is haunted by Mary Todd herself. People have heard weeping when they have been near this dress, which is just sad. There have also been times where people have claimed to see Mary Todd's apparition standing beside the dress. She means no harm, I guess she's just there to mourn, but that would be a sad and creepy sight. Number 2. Abraham Lincoln's Hat Yes, the Smithsonian has acquired one of Honest Abe's hats, but 
just not any hat, the one he died in. So of course, if you have an item of clothing that someone died in, I'm sure it's going to be haunted. The last time he put on this hat was to go to Ford's Theatre in April 1865. After he died, his hat and everything from Ford's Theatre was preserved. In 1867, it made its way to the Smithsonian, and it was originally put in the basement and not on display because they thought there was too much excitement at the time and kept it quiet. The Smithsonian didn't even reveal that they had the hat until 1893. It's now one of the Smithsonian's most treasured objects and obviously it's haunted by Abe himself. A number of people have seen his apparition around the museum, and does that mean that him and Mary haunt the Smithsonian together? Cause that's uh, a couple goals. And coming in at number one is the founder. Now this isn't any type of art or artifact, but it's said that James Smithson, the founding donor of the Smithsonian Institute, has been spotted wandering the organization's castles, home to its administrative and information headquarters on numerous occasions. This starts to make a lot of sense when you learn that James's remains have been kept at the museum since 1904. James' frequent appearances were supposedly causing such a ruckus that in 1973, his remains were briefly dug up for investigation. His skeleton was in fact still safely in the coffin though, but there's nothing to say of his spirit. Other motives for him being dug up might have been to search for documents rumored to have been buried with him, but I want to think it's because they actually wanted to make sure that he was dead. He's not the only ghostly worker found wandering around though, as it's said that other former employees' apparitions have been spotted too, which is scary. Number 10. Cursed Maori Warrior Masks Maoris are indigenous people of New Zealand, and according to Maori tradition, the warriors carve and paint masks before a battle, and it's said if they die, their spirits live on within the mask. The warrior mask is an important part of their tradition. Now, Maori tradition dictates that a menstruating woman is tapu or taboo, and so are the masks. So if both of them come into contact with each other, it would invoke a curse. Also, pregnant women are considered sacred. So a Maori museum in Wellington, New Zealand tells pregnant and menstruating women to stay away from several sacred Maori artifacts including traditional Maori warrior masks as they could invoke a curse. If this could happen, why would they even show it off? This would stress me out if I went or even worked in this museum. Number 9. Thomas Busby's Chair Popularly known as Busby's Stoop Chair, this wooden chair is cursed by the spirit of Thomas Busby, who by the way was known to end the lives of many people. In 1702, before being put to death for his crimes, he requested to have a meal in his favorite local pub. Upon finishing his meal, he stood and said, My sudden death come to anyone who dare sits on my chair. And ever since then, 63 people who dared to sit on the chair met untimely and terrifying deaths. World War II pilots who took turns in the chair perished during battle, a delivery man died in a car crash right after trying the chair out in the 1970s, and so on. In 1978, the pub's landlord gave the chair to the Thirsk Museum, along with strict instructions for it to be suspended above the floor, and it has been hanging there ever since. Number 6. Cursed Mirror at Myrtle's Plantation. A historic home and former plantation, the Myrtle's Plantation in St. Francisville, Louisiana is considered one of America's most haunted places. The plantation house is rumored to be on top of an ancient Tunica Indian burial ground, which is just like, duh, of course, it's haunted. It is home of at least 12 ghosts, and it's often reported that 10 people have their lives ended in the house. There are many creepy legends surrounding this property, and the tale of the cursed mirror is one of the most famous. According to legend, the former owner of the house, Sarah Woodruff, and her two daughters were poisoned by their slave and are trapped inside the mirror. Visitors of the house report seeing handprints, strange marks, and even figures dressed in old-fashioned clothes lurking in the mirror. I feel like being trapped inside a mirror would suck. Number 5. Screaming Skull of Burton Agnes Hall An Elizabethan manor house in the village of Burton Agnes, England is home to a paranormal object known as the Screaming Skull. Okay, just the name of the Screaming Skull terrifies me because like, how? Well, the skull belonged to Catherine Ann Griffith who died in the house in 
1620 after being attacked by bullies. Every night, a terrifying ghost is seen roaming around the skull, making tremendous noises and scaring out everyone who tried to remove the skull. Now, why does Anne do this? Well, she was somewhat of a troubled girl, and she told her sisters that she would never rest unless part of her could remain in our beautiful home as long as it shall last. She made them promise that when she was dead, her head would be served and preserved in the hall forever, and the sisters hesitantly agreed. But when Anne died, she was buried in the churchyard. Then the ghost would come to the house at night and scare everyone. But remembering Anne's dying words, the sisters took counsel with the vicar and eventually agreed that the grave should be opened. The skull was brought into the house, and so long as it was undisturbed, the hall was peaceful and untroubled. Many attempts have been made to get rid of it, but they never could, and it should honestly just stay there forever. Number 4. Annabelle Doll Okay, it's not a haunted list without a haunted doll. Now is it? The Annabelle Doll is probably one of the best known haunted dolls in history. Bought in an antique shop in 1970, a woman gave a Raggedy Ann doll to her daughter Donna, who was in nursing school. Let me just say, I had my own Raggedy Ann doll growing up, and it always gave me the chills. Now, Donna and her roommate Angie kept coming home to find the doll in different positions and different locations. Then the doll began leaving them notes reading help. A psychic told them the girl was possessed by the spirit of a girl named Annabelle who had died at the location where their apartment complex had been built. But the girl's friend Lou thought there was something more sinister about Annabelle, and she levitated up his body and strangled him until he passed out. The next night, the roommates heard what sounded like someone in the next room. Lou investigated, and he was found screaming with two massive claw marks on his chest, although no one else was in the room except Annabelle. The girls called Ed and Lorraine Warren, who who decided the doll was actually a conduit to hell that a demon was using. Two exorcisms didn't work, and the Warrens took Annabelle home. Upon arriving home, Ed and Lorraine placed the doll in Ed's study, and the doll levitated and around the house. Even when placed in a locked office in an outer building, the Warrens claimed that she would turn up later inside the house. Finally, the Warrens decided to lock Annabelle up for good. The Warrens had a specifically made glass and wood case constructed, upon which they inscribed the Lord's Prayer and St. Michael's Prayer. For the rest of his life, Ed would periodically say a binding prayer over the case, ensuring that the sinister spirit and the doll remained good and trapped. Number 10. Pompeii Artifacts Once a flourishing Roman city located near the Bay of Naples in Italy, that was of course until 79 AD. That's when Mount Vesuvius erupted and it buried the entire city and sadly all of its inhabitants under layers of ash and pumice. Now the eruption was so powerful that it wiped out not just life within the general vicinity, but all life within a 16 mile radius. Yeah, it makes you think about Yellowstone National Park a bit, doesn't it? I'm like, oh, that's that's close. Earth is scary. I don't know. Pompeii remained buried and forgotten for almost 1700 years. That is until it was rediscovered in 1748. Now today, Pompeii is an archaeological site that offers a glimpse into ancient Roman life with, of course, well-preserved ruins of homes, public buildings, streets, artwork, restaurants. They even opened a recent restaurant there. I don't know. It's a fun time now. And there's a great amount of people who steal from this ancient landmark. Yeah, how to get cursed 101. Here's how you do it, folks. Steal from Pompeii. Why would you? Okay. Tourists would come and steal fragments of monuments, literally pieces of the city. They would just pocket it and then dip. Yeah, I'll just put this ballista ball on my fireplace. That looks lovely. For sure not cursed, right? A hundred packages a year end up getting sent back to the archaeological superintendents in Pompeii. Most of them accompanied with a letter explaining the bad luck that occurred. They're like, sorry we took this brick. My grandmother died. That sucks. I feel bad. Let's move on. Number nine, portrait of Bernardo de Galvez. Art is subjective, but I never knew it was haunted. My gosh, here we go. Bernardo de Galvez was a nobleman and military leader who played a significant role in the American Revolution. Widely regarded as a hero for his efforts to aid the American colonies in their fight against British rule. Some believe that there is a curse attached to his portrait. Yeah, haunted portrait? That's terrifying. According to legend, anybody who looks directly into the eyes of Bernardo's portrait will suffer a terrible, terrible fate. The curse was born during the Spanish-American War when American soldiers looted Galvez's home in Louisiana. They took his portrait as a trophy. Again, how to get cursed 101. Here's how you do it. 
Since then, several people who have come into possession of the portrait or stared deep into the portrait's eyes all have experienced misfortune in some way or another. One man inherited the portrait from his grandfather and then hung it in his home. Not long after, he lost his job and then his wife left him. Maybe he's just bad taste in art, I don't know. Another tale involved a museum curator who displayed the painting and then soon after suffered a heart attack. Now, even those who have seen photographs of the portrait, they claim to feel uneasy or experience strange occurrences. I should have led with that. Whoops, my bad. Number eight, James Dean's car. James Dean's love for fast cars was of course well known, and sadly because one of them took his life. One ultimately led to his tragic death at the age of 24, and some are convinced that his cars were cursed. All these vehicles are the reason for it. Dean's first vehicle was actually a Triumph Tiger. It was a T110 motorcycle, and it was involved in an accident that left him with a broken leg. Rough start. It gets worse. His next car, a Porsche 550 Spider, is the one that he famously died in right after colliding head on with another vehicle. I don't know if that one was cursed, but we should look into that maybe. That's already tragic. That's dark history right there. But after Dean's death, the Porsche was sold off and then quickly became infamous for causing more accidents and deaths. One of its owners even reported seeing James Dean's ghost sitting in the passenger seat shortly before crashing. That's so jarring. I couldn't imagine, I'd be like, ah, ah, ah. I don't even know where to start with that. That's two bad things happening. Then the car disappeared from the public view in the late 1960s and has since been rumored to be hidden away by collectors who also believe it to be cursed. Yeah, fair, keep that away locked up. I don't even care where that is. I just looked directly into that light twice now. Three, three times, I gotta stop, ah. Another Porsche that he owned was destroyed when it caught fire while being transported on a trailer. And a third Porsche that he had ordered, well, never even made it to him. It was involved in an accident during transport that killed that driver. Whether you believe in curses or not, there's no denying that, you know, this car collection has some dark, tragic history, some sort of bad juju going on. I don't know. That's why I don't have my G1 personally. That's why I don't drive, so I don't know. Number six, the Bassano Vase. Also known as the Vase of Death. That's a good one. Legend has it that this vase was crafted in Italy during the 15th century and was once owned by a powerful noble family. That's how it all starts, right? Then the curse comes. However, there it is, however, tragedy struck when several members of the family died under mysterious circumstances. Now at that point, curse confirmed, right? Absolutely. The curse of the Bassano vase is said to cause anyone who possesses it to suffer from physical or mental afflictions, sometimes both, and sometimes even bringing death. Despite its reputation as a cursed object, some are fascinated. They want this vase or vase, I'm not really sure yet, but they want it in their home for some reason. They wanna crack the code, they wanna break the curse, right? A pharmacist, an archeologist, both of these owners died shortly after receiving the vase, so I don't know what to believe anymore. The Italian police, apparently they buried it in a lead box somewhere else there, so that's great. I mean, it's gonna suck when we find it in 600 years, but for now, we're okay. Number two, Elmo. This guy, not so innocent. This guy's done some stuff. I had like eight Elmos growing up. I loved them. None of them talked to me. None of them knew my name. Thank God, that's a little personal. The Sesame Street icon has been in homes for many, many years. There was a literal stampede when Tickle Me Elmo was released. An employee was trampled. People go nuts for these little red guys. When the Elmo Knows Your Name toy was launched by Fisher Price in 2005, that was game changing, right? This guy's intimate. Now he's learning things. There were 15,000 names ready to go. Only one family was traumatized. Only one, not bad. The Elmo toy apparently spoke on its own, threatening to harm the family in the Elmo voice, which is half hilarious, half terrifying. So they tossed it out immediately, but this happened more than once. The audio sounded off for some of these devices. Be like Elmo sounded like beat up Elmo. The Elmo phone released in 2009 often said 456, but in some cases it sounded like who wants to have, mm, right? Six and sex, it's, you know, they sound kind of similar, I guess. Very different things. We're all learning with Elmo, whether you like it or not. We're just learning some uh, intimate topics. I like touching this today. I've been doing this a lot. This is cool. I feel like I'm at a museum. I'm like, hey, what's this? It can be whatever you want. It's a green screen. Number one, the great bed of wear. All right, we'll get nice and cozy for our last one here, and then we'll put it to rest. We'll put it to bed. Just not in this one, that's for sure. The great bed of wear, it's massive, it's cozy, it looks like a bed a king would certainly sleep in, and rightfully so. You know, it's, it's it, yeah, sure. I wouldn't, I'm not a king, but yeah, go get itchy. The great bed of wear was built for the royal family back in 1463. It was 12 feet by 12 feet. Plenty of space to 
cut your toenails and get all dirty like a king would. Jonas Vosbrook was a carpenter from that time, and they impressed the king, which was King Edward IV at the time, with his work. So much so that the king gave him a pension for the rest of his life. Yeah, you're set, there you go, you're laughing, you're rolling in it. People would travel all across the land to see this beautiful bed. Yeah, what a fun family vacation. Yeah, we're not going to Disneyland, we're going to the great bed of where? Sorry, I don't know, I got laid off. All those who stayed in the bed did not have a good night's rest. No, instead they woke up scratched and bruised, or they would wake up on the floor. Somehow they would roll out of a 12 foot bed, right? Unless you're lanky and 6'2 like me, I don't know how that's possible, it's crazy. Today it can be found in the Victoria and Albert Museum. Would you stay the night in this old haunted, dirty, and probably bug infested, uncomfortable bed? Sound off below. I probably would. I don't know. I would starfish the whole time and be like, yeah, I can. Whatever. And ghosts? Nice. Rest and a show. We're good to go. Starting us off at number 10 is The Watch. Now this one genuinely freaked me out because everything was just way too coincidental. But let me know if you guys actually believe it or not. So on the listing for this watch, the seller said the watch was owned by a 24-year-old woman called Julie. The watch was a gift from her dad and he gave it to her before he died, saying whenever she wears it, he'll always be looking looking over her. And she used to basically wear it every single day no matter what she was doing. Like you know that kind of accessory you only really take off when you're showering? Like that. Either way, one night she left the watch on her nightstand while working and decided to go for a cheeky midnight jog. Either way, one night she left the watch on her nightstand while working and decided to go for a jog. But she never came back from her jog. Julie ended up getting abducted and killed by a delusional person at around 11.29pm and the watch has actually been stuck on that time since that night. Its batteries are fine, it's not broken, it just doesn't move its hands. Julie's friend took the watch to a medium who confirmed that Julie knows for a fact that if she had been wearing the watch, she would have been safe and so she just refuses to leave it now. The seller shared that whenever they hold the watch, there's sometimes a really abrupt temperature drop and at one point they felt freezing in 80 degree weather. And apparently this whole backstory didn't really hold much appeal since it was bought for a whopping $17.5. Talk about cheap. So coming in at number 9 is Joey. Yeah, so this seller literally listed this little boy called Joey on eBay for $100 and I'm like, talk about self-worth and the legality and the humaneness of that. No, I'm kidding. Joey isn't a little boy. It's actually just a vintage teddy bear. Plot twist. The seller wrote that his grandma visited an antique store in San Diego as a teenager and bought this creepy teddy bear. She took it home, named it Joey, and then very quickly started having really horrific nightmares. She'd go to bed with Joey on her bedside stand facing one direction and when she woke up he'd be facing a completely different direction. And last time I checked, inanimate bears can't move on their own. How does that work? Other instances she'd leave the room and come back and the bear would have one of his arms in the air and despite how freaky it was, she never told her parents about it because she didn't want them to throw Joey away. Which honestly, you know like fair enough, you start getting attached to creepy cursed bears over time, it happens, can't help it. Either way, time passed and on the grandma's 90th birthday she told the seller to take some of her things, including Joey. He put the bear in his room and soon after started having really bad nightmares. We're getting a sense of deja vu here. <laughs> and he started feeling this constant sensation of being watched all the time. His body parts would move randomly and at a certain point the seller's kids started crying and begging him to get rid of the bear. He decided to store him in their garage and then items in the garage would start falling from their shelves and moving out of place. And for all those reasons, the seller refused to have this cursed bear in his house any longer and listed it on eBay where it was bought for a whopping $180. At number 8 we have Eve. Now Eve is listed on eBay by a Las Vegas based seller Angel Fire Lights for $1,666. I love how they could have easily just kept the price at $666 which would have been a lot more creepy but they were like you know nah I want the extra grand. Either way Eve is a cursed doll who's said to have a murderous spirit inside of her. The doll itself is extremely pale, she has tied up red hair and is wearing a very fancy greyish white dress and she sort of looks all timey like she's from the early 1900s. I could be overthinking but she really does look like that. Anyway the story goes that human Eve's lover gave her this doll but then she went on to murder her lover and sister after they ended up falling in love with each other. She then took her own life and her spirit was doomed to curse this doll forever. 
scorned women, you guys. You can't mess with us, honestly. The seller said she can hear broken hearted cries during the night and that Eve causes the worst migraines. I don't know why you'd include that since that's just not a great selling point, but sure, like no one's gonna pay nearly two grand for a migraine. I certainly won't. Coming in at number five is the photo. Listed by the asylum attic, the historic daguerreotype is apparently cursed by a Victorian man named Martin. And if you don't know what that is, it's basically the first type of photographic process that was invented. So just imagine black and white old creepy men photographed looking like they have something stuck up there. And that's exactly what it is. The seller said they randomly found it hidden in the attic of their house and kind of entertained by it would bring it out for their guests to look at. The more they did that, the more guests started noticing certain smells that would appear along with the photo. The smell of roses, the scent of cigar smoke, even the musty smell of smoke from a fire. The seller became so curious about the photo that they bought a Ouija board and spoke to the spirit inside. They claimed Martin was quite talkative and playful but would suddenly become closed off at times. Sounds a bit moody to me. Either way, the seller liked Martin so much they moved the painting from the attic and hung it in their living room. After that, items in the house literally started disappearing and not just moving around, which was happening too, no no, just straight up disappearing. They'd hear footsteps in the living room when they were trying to sleep and these things just started happening more and more that they ended up wanting to sell it. And there we have it. Out you go, Martin. You play too much. At number four is the juice container. This one is probably the cutest thing on the list. It's like a little deer carrying a moonshine bottle, but it's obviously not for moonshine, it's for juice or water. And there are a bunch of little cups attached at the bottom. All around, very cute. Anyway, the item was listed by Griffey911NY, and they described it as a donkey juice container. When, like, it is not a donkey from any angle, it's so clearly a deer. The thing looks like exactly like Batman. Be. Either way, the listing said it randomly fills up with water. The seller inherited it years ago from their grandma and it's been showing him weird shit all his life. Now, originally, he just assumed his grandma would fill it with water every day, but after she died, he realized it was still happening and no one else was doing it. He's always been skeptical of the jug. I mean, he doesn't find the occurrence scary or anything. He just doesn't get how it happens or why it happens. He has a strong feeling the jug had a big backstory involving it being cursed since his grandma was really into the occult, but she never trusted him enough to actually tell him the story. Either way, if that's cursed, that's a very good curse to be, like free water for life, unless it's from the baths of hell, then then it's not so good. Filling our number three slot are the gentleman's shoes. So dolls are up there and so are shoes apparently. So the seller said he found these black leather shoes at a local thrift store and when he got home, he realized the shoes had been engraved with the previous owner's name. Curious, the seller decided to search up the name and found the man's obituary. The more he read, the more he found out and he realized the man had been reported missing and his murdered body was found a month later. Now here's where it gets weird, not that that wasn't weird, cause it was. As soon as he finished reading the article, his computer randomly shut itself off. Weird, but he brushed it off. But then that night, he had a massive crash in his kitchen and found one of his blackboards just on the floor. Thinking it was a freak accident, he just went back to bed. The next day, he woke up and his son told him the electricity in his room had gone out for 30 minutes, even though the rest of the house was completely fine. He even had two blessed mother statues and they were facing different directions, even though no one had moved them. He opened his fridge one day and five things fell out even though they were always pushed to the back and never at the edge. So after all that, he was like, these shoes are going because my life was completely fine before I bought them. So he ended up listing them on eBay and they were sold for $125. These are the second cursed shoes on the list now. Ain't nobody got time for debt. And finally, at number one is the jewelry box. It looks like the most antique jewelry box ever. Like honestly, who needs a jewelry box that big? It's genuinely massive. I could put clothes in there if I tried. Mine's like three dainty glass boxes, but anyway, that's relevant. The seller claims the box used to be owned by a lovely young woman who ended up dying in a horrible plane crash. 
After she died, her mom kept the box and started hearing bizarre noises coming from what used to be her bedroom. The days went by, she kept hearing it, and finally bringing herself to enter her daughter's room again, she went in to see a full body apparition of her daughter screaming in the middle of the room. Now she couldn't hear anything the daughter was saying but the hum she'd been hearing for the past few days. The current seller used EVPs to see what was really up and they reported hearing the words take me home and hello. When they used an EMF, the box triggered even higher ratings. So the box is most definitely cursed by the girl's soul and I hope whoever buys it knows it's like a buy one get one full screaming ghost girl for free package deal. It should say that somewhere, like a little, you know, like in fine print. Starting off this countdown, we have the used false teeth. Lord, I don't know why anyone would list this, let alone buy it. But I searched eBay and apparently there's a hot market for false teeth. Specifically, used false teeth. Anyway, this item was listed and sold for 25 pounds. Take a look. Why would anyone want those? Are they a collector's item or something? Not only that, but the teeth were listed as well used and in need of a clean. No, sorry. That's where I draw the line. Coming in at number nine, we have William Shatner's Kidney Stone. You heard me correctly. If you guys are liking this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up because it really helps us out. In 2006, William Shatner passed a kidney stone and put it up for sale on eBay. Okay, like I get that he's a celebrity and all, but who wants a kidney stone? Not me, even if it was from Harry Styles or someone else. No thank you. Anyways, the stone ended up selling at $15,000. I just wonder where the stone is now. Moving on to number eight, we have the possessed bartender doll. According to this next eBay seller, this doll is possessed and would often move on its own, even when it's got no batteries in it. Apparently she received this doll along with a number of other haunted items from a friend. The friend had a relative that passed away and she was a witch that practiced dark magic. In the description of the item she wrote, honestly, it just gives me the creeps and I don't like the energy it gives off. Yeah. That thing looks creepy AF, but it sold for $90, so someone's got a possessed doll on their hands. In our seventh spot, we have the haunted zombie doll. So I don't know why anyone would want to buy real haunted or cursed items on eBay. Like, do they have a death wish or something? Anyways, this woman decided to buy a doll on eBay titled the haunted zombie doll. It was labeled as a very active doll. The seller said, it's as if she's almost alive. It also came with specific care instructions. It was to be locked away in a silver viewing box. But this girl ignored all that. She intended on having it as a decor piece. Not judging, but I'd say just stick to Ikea decor. So she did what she was not supposed to and took the doll out of the box. And what do you know, the doll repeatedly attacked her which left her with cuts and bruises on her legs. One night she heard tapping noises downstairs and when she went to explore, she found the doll on the ground. This continued constantly. Then one night she was sitting on her porch and felt a stinging sensation on her leg. She looked down and she had three claw marks on her ankle, not from a raccoon. Every night she would wake up with a new scratch or mark on her body. She then locked the doll back in the box and put it in her basement. But that didn't stop it. The doll would haunt her in her dreams. And sometimes she could hear like an evil laugh and giggle coming from the basement. Now she eventually resold the doll on eBay, but the haunting didn't stop until she got herself and her home cleansed. In our sixth spot, we have the Dybbuk box. Yes, this next eBay seller sold a Dybbuk box. Basically, it's a box that contains a malicious spirit that can and will possess you. So you really don't want to be messing around with these types of things. The box was listed with the warning, Demonic Entity Attachment. Do not open. I don't know how eBay lets people sell cursed items. Like, hello, that's a lawsuit waiting to happen. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the haunted cane. In 2004, a six-year-old boy was convinced that his grandfather's ghost was haunting him. So his mom decided to sell the grandfather's cane on eBay to try and get rid of the ghost. She thought maybe he would go where the cane went. So she listed the cane on eBay and explained her situation. Best business move of her life. The cane sold for $65,000. Seriously, I'm about to go to the thrift store and pick up a bunch of weird items and claim that they're haunted, cause damn, I need that kind of money. In our third spot, we have the mummified tongue. 
Yes, this person sold a mummified tongue. In fact, eBay took it down once because they thought it was a real human tongue. But then the seller reposted it and clarified that it was a non-human taxidermy specimen. But still, they didn't say what animal or thing it belonged to. Anyways, the listing read as so. Interesting mummified dorset tongue in a simple white matted and red textured background shadow box. The tongue is very detailed with taste buds visible. Specimen is correctly preserved and will last indefinitely. Sure to be a great conversation piece, great for your collection. First off, the whole taste buds visible part, TMI. I just, I didn't need to know that. And sure, yeah, great conversation piece. If you own a museum, not for hanging in your home, but it sold for $51, so clearly someone liked it. In our second spot, we have the ghost in a jar. So if you wanted to, you could buy a ghost. Sounds crazy, but it's true. So according to this seller, back in the early 1980s, while out metal detecting, he came across an old abandoned cemetery. While searching around, his metal detector started going crazy. So he took his shovel and started digging. That's when he came across a rotten wooden box. When he opened it, he found two jars. The jars had weird writing and symbols on it. While trying to get the jars out, he dropped one of them and it broke. That's when a black mist seeped out of it. After doing research, he found out that he probably let out someone's spirit or a ghost. The other jar he put up for sale and you won't believe how much someone bought it for. Fifty thousand dollars. That's insane. For all we know, it could just be a bottle of dirt and not even a real ghost, so. And in our number one spot, we have Jeffrey Dahmer's jacket. Okay, this one is absolutely crazy. But this one eBay seller claimed that he owned a jacket that once belonged to serial killer and cannibal Jeffrey Dahmer. According to the seller, he was in the same class as Dahmer at River High in Bath, Ohio. In senior year, the seller was doing a comedy act and needed an army jacket for the sketch. They didn't have one, so Jeffrey loaned him one from his car. After the show, he said for him to keep it. Some even remember Jeffrey wearing that exact jacket. Okay, are we sure that that was one of Jeffrey's jackets or was it one of his victims? Who knows? But the jacket ended up selling for $150. Number 10, Han Solo. No, Han Solo did not get possessed. He was the thing doing the possessing. One look at this stormtrooper toy is already enough to make you feel like it's cursed. Han Solo's lifeless eyes staring out into space are enough to put you on edge. And as much as I thought Harrison Ford was a hottie in the movies, I just can't get past those eyes. So take in its unsettling visual appearance and then the way it apparently haunts the people who own it. The person in selling it said that when they came into ownership of the toy, they started experiencing strange and terrifying things. That's because there is apparently a spirit trapped inside the toy who perished in a house fire, his soul coming to possess the stormtrooper. As a result, anyone who owns the toy will be haunted by hallucinations of a house on fire, and you apparently can't escape it when you go to sleep either. It will reportedly give you nightly nightmares of the man who died screaming while the house around him is engulfed in fire flames. Number 9. Doorknobs Asylums are often known as being incredibly haunted. This comes from the fact that many people believe ghosts and spirits come around from having a traumatic death or having unfinished business on earth. With the history of mental health care practices as scary and unethical as it is, it's no wonder that these sort of places are busy with spiritual activity, especially after they've been shut down and abandoned. This seller on eBay had two doorknobs that he claimed to have taken from an abandoned asylum that apparently had many reports of strange noises and other paranormal activity taking place. These aren't just nice antique knobs, but instead hold the trauma of angry ghosts who will want to make your home as terrifying and haunted as the asylum they came from. The person who owned them said that doors in their home would often open without cause and they could hear people's voices when nobody else was there. Number 8. Teddy Bear While some haunted items may definitely look the part, being torn up, withered, and maybe having that soul look in their eyes, there are some possessed artifacts that actually look pretty unassuming. For one, this adorable little teddy bear that I found. His name is Joshua and he's pretty cute, but he also apparently sets off EMF readers and is possessed by an angry restless spirit. The people selling it found him at an estate sale and apparently when they held the teddy bear, they immediately started to feel upset, overwhelmed, and anxious. They used a spirit box to try and communicate with whoever was possessing the doll and it responded that he felt 
alone. Apparently being an old man who had recently passed away and has been unable to come to terms with the fact that they're dead. Because of this, they are apparently trying to latch on to someone to continue their life and not need to accept that they're dead. Number 7. Haunted Bra Let's follow that up with something a little bit weirder. Not a haunted teddy bear, but instead a haunted bra. While possession is a big scary word, it may not always have to be a bad thing as this item claims. The person selling this size 32A bra says that it is haunted by a woman who lived a life of many romantic adventures and wild partying. When she died, she somehow attached her spirit to the bra. If you wear the bra, you will find yourself having the same romantic success that she did in her life. It's also said that if you light a candle by the bra, the woman's spirit will appear. And if the candle is red, the woman will possess you and you will have a quote, erotic encounter with the spiritual world. I'm not quite sure exactly what that would be and what it would include, but I'm about to place an Amazon order for a bulk pack of red candles for a totally unrelated reason. Number 2. Haunted Statue Next up we have another artistic piece that is apparently haunted by the restless and angry spirit of its deceased creator. The seller said that this piece was created by a man named William, who worked construction and would spend his spare time making statues out of clay. This specific statue, which is pretty creepy on its own by the way, was made the same day that William passed away in a freak accident on the construction site. When a co-worker later returned to the site, they saw that the statue was still there, so he decided to pick it up and take it home with him. As soon as he got home, strange things started happening. Doors would slam with no explanation, lights would turn on and off, decorations near the statue would be shattered and destroyed, and sometimes the statue would turn around and face different directions. He said he also felt unwell mentally and would sometimes see a strange shadow next to the statue, deciding he needed to be rid of it and putting it on eBay. Related anecdote from my childhood, when I was a kid I had a 2x4 piece of wood that I painted a face on and I named it Steve. And he was absolutely terrifying so me and my siblings would hide him around the house like in cupboards and under pillows in order to freak each other out. I don't know if I've mentioned it before, but I was a pretty weird kid. Number 1. Haunted Dolls Finally, we get to talk about the haunted dolls that will apparently try to ruin your life and possess you. In researching this video, I went down a rabbit hole and learned that there is an entire market on eBay dedicated to selling dolls that have apparently become the home of various different spirits. They are listed with what kind of spirit is inhabiting them, whether it be a happy one, an angry one, or even one with motherly intentions. The descriptions usually tell stories of where they found the doll, how the spirit died, and what things will happen to people who own it. They are also sometimes stated to be beginner friendly or not beginner friendly, I guess basing that on how much experience you have with dolls with ghosts inside of them. There are just so many of these strange and insane stories that range from terrifying to hilarious that I am actually going to be making a full top 10 video of just haunted eBay dolls, so if you're interested in that, keep your eye out over the next week. Archaeologists have a really cool job, but also quite a daunting one. With all the time human beings have been on this earth, most of those years being violent and tumultuous, there are a good number of objects that have a pretty dark history behind them. So uh, let's talk about them. We're going to start off the list with Mummy Juanita. If there's anything in the world that is likely cursed, it's got to be mummies. And I don't even care if curses are real. Mummies, they're creepy as hell anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So back in 1995, on a casual day, of mummy hunting, as one does, anthropologist Johann Reinhardt and his gang stumbled upon something pretty mind-blowing on Mount Ampato in the Andes Mountains of Peru. Enter Mummy Juanita, also known as the Ice Maiden or Lady of Ampato. Juanita was a teenage Inca girl, making her way to about 14 years old before meeting her unfortunate end. The crazy part was that this discovery was accidental. Reinhardt and his crew were on a mission to find another Inca mummy when, whoopsie daisy, they stumbled upon Juanita in a crevice at a whopping 20,600 feet above sea level. Quite the surprise, she was wrapped up in layers of vibrant textiles, lying there with all kinds of goodies around her, ceramics, metals, food, even tiny statues. All of these extra items she was adorned with made it pretty likely that she had been sacrificed, likely to 
the gods. Next on the list is the Screaming Mummy. Yeah, if you thought your regular old mummy was unsettling, how about one who died in pain and terror with a face eternally stuck in a scream? That is the Screaming Mummy, also known as Man E. This mummy was discovered in 1886 by Gaston Maspero, the head of the Egyptian Antiques Service. Man E didn't seem to go through your typical mummification ritual. For one, his internal organs hadn't been removed and his hands and feet were bound. So that combined with his terrified expression meant it was pretty likely this guy had been buried alive, which is absolutely horrifying. That's one of my worst fears. At the very least though, he'd been in pain when he died. So is this mummy cursed? Let's just say I'd be far more surprised to discover that it wasn't. Next we have a story about a disturbing music box. This story was shared to Reddit by Majestic Park, who talked about a music box her ex-boyfriend had that was passed down to him from his grandmother after she passed away. Majestic Park talked about how off the thing made them feel. They couldn't even play the thing and tried to stay away from it as much as possible. It just had a bad vibe about it. They went on to write, The boyfriend moved out of the house, and when he left, I put all the things he left behind out in the storeroom, including the music box. I had hell after that. I had health problems. Both of my dogs got cancer and had to be put down. My car constantly broke down. My mother took ill and died. A mentally ill neighbor started stalking and harassing me, and I was constantly at odds with my friends and coworkers. Plus, I started having money problems. Finally, Finally, I decided to move and get rid of all the old boyfriend's things. I threw that effing music box in the back of my pickup with all the other stuff and hauled it to the dump. I have no idea if it had anything to do with getting rid of the music box. My life started to even out and got better. I was able to get a new car. I got another boyfriend, I bought a house, and my troubles with my friends and coworkers started to subside. The crazy neighbor was sent to a treatment hospital, and a friend gave me a wonderful dog. I had a good run of about 10 years before anything else bad happened to me. Next on the list is the Cursed Spear Point. So another Redditor talked about an artifact that may have been responsible for some bad stuff as soon as they found it. User Grok23 wrote, I found a spear point in a really old medicine wheel wheel here in Wyoming. I took it and instantly got bad vibes. A lot of creepy sh happened until I returned it. Don't mess with native sacred sites. And that's where the post ends. So then someone else asked them uh, what creepy stuff happened. So Grok23 continued with, on the way home my motorcycle's tire blew up and threw me off and I almost stabbed myself on the spearhead. Obsidian, so... Pretty sharp. That night, I kept hearing banging noises on my wall and had sleep paralysis where I saw some shadow figures. The next day, I apologized and placed it back in the medicine wheel, which looked like this. And he attached this image here. Yeah, that, that is actually a lot of stuff to happen in a very short span of time. I, I'd be getting rid of that thing too. We're back to mummies again, this time with what has been dubbed the Scottish Frankenstein mummies. So in 2001, archeologists were doing a dig in a Bronze Age settlement in Scotland where they dug up a pair of 3,000 year old skeletons. One was male, the other was female. They'd fully decomposed at this point and were just skeletons, but the team performed tests on the bones and discovered that they had been intentionally preserved initially. This was Pretty cool on its own because intentional mummification in Europe was rare. But the creepy part comes next. Turned out that each of these skeletons were cobbled together like Frankenstein style creations. The male skeleton had parts belonging to three different men. A torso from one, a skull and neck from another, and a lower jaw from some other guy. And the female actually had a male skull, a female torso, in the arm of somebody else. Until this day, researchers don't know why these bones were pieced together like that. Next we have the knife-handed skeleton. All right, I'm not actually sure if this next thing is cursed, but it's so damn cool, I couldn't help but throw it on the list. I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it brought some bad luck. What did folks in the medieval times do when they had a limb lobbed off in battle? Well, most of them just died. Uh, some of you may be shocked by this, but folks back then 
didn't have quite the same quality of medical care that we do now. Apparently people wouldn't always die though after having their hand detached from their arm with the help of a battle axe. In the early 90s, Italian archaeologists dug up a male skeleton with a missing right forearm. And to compensate, he attached a knife to his forearm with some sort of medieval style prosthesis, likely made of buckles and straps. You see, the teeth on the right side of his mouth were super worn down, meaning he was most likely tightening the prosthesis with his teeth, you know, kind of like going like that. Now, of course, people are sometimes born missing limbs, but that was not the case here. Researchers made a 3D model of his right arm with a CT scan and discovered that there had been severe blunt force trauma to his forearm. So this guy had his forearm removed, survived the procedure in a time where medical care was a total joke, and then attached a blade to his arm to keep fighting another day. Someone needs to make a movie about this guy. Next on the list, we have the Cursed Stila. This is an ancient artifact that comes in two parts. So back in 1879, one half was in Syria, but today it sits in the British Museum. The other half went on a different adventure, landing at the Bonhams Auction House in London. Now, the British Museum had a shot at reuniting these two long lost halves in 2014, but they decided against it. And why was that? Well, there were two reasons. For one, it was a bit of a mystery as to how the lower half up for grabs at the auction left Syria. All we know is that it supposedly passed from father to son in the 60s. Cue the suspicious side eye and conspiracy theories about it being swiped from its home country. And secondly, there's the curse. The inscription on the artifact, when translated to English, is a warning that reads, whoever discards this image from the presence of Salmanu puts it into another place, whether he throws it into water or covers it with earth or brings and places it into a taboo house where it is inaccessible. May the god Salmanu, the great lord, overthrow his sovereignty. May his name and his seed disappear into the land. May he live in a contingent together with the slave woman of his land. So housing it in a British museum certainly counts as putting it into another place. So uh, they opted not to purchase the second half, perhaps partly in fear of angering Salmanu even further. The Terracotta Army. In 1974, a group of farmers in China stumbled on something big while digging a well. They found this massive pit filled with thousands of life-size clay soldiers, horses, and chariots. These clay soldiers were made over 2,000 years ago to guard the tomb of China's first emperor. The emperor wanted an army to follow him into the afterlife, so his followers made this incredible army out of clay, and each soldier was unique with different faces, hairstyles, and even uniforms. It's incredibly impressive to look at, even just in pictures. But back to the curse part, some people claim that disturbing the emperor's tomb, which probably includes finding and digging up the terracotta army, brings bad luck. And the farmers who discovered it in 74 had a pretty tough time afterward. First off, their village got moved because of all the fuss about the discovery, and then a bunch of the farmers faced hardships like illness and financial troubles. Now we move on to a cursed mirror known as the Dark Mirror. It's said that this scrying mirror, which is now housed in the Traveling Museum of Paranormal and Occult, shows disturbing visions when you gaze into it. The most common thing people see is their own corpse staring right back at them. People have also reported seeing themselves rapidly age. Some have seen their reflection move on its own, like winking or smiling at them. Or sometimes people's reflection will just vanish altogether. A man donated the mirror to the museum after buying it at a Columbus area psychic fair. As soon as he took the thing home, he started experiencing some disturbing stuff, i.e. every time he looked at the mirror, things just looked off. Almost like the mirror was conjuring up his deepest, darkest fears and taunting him with them. Suffice to say, he didn't want the thing in his house anymore. And we're gonna start things off at number 10 with the Satanic Idol. This item was once housed at the Warren Occult Museum, and according to the Warrens, the idol is about as pleasant as it sounds. Now, regardless of your opinion on these two paranormal investigators, the tale behind this object is pretty entertaining. So in Sandy Hook, Connecticut in 1991, a hunter stumbles upon something, a mysterious idol, just chilling in the middle of the woods, feeling off about the whole 
whole thing, the hunter wisely decides to make a quick exit. But as he's walking away, a cloaked figure, an elderly man in black robes, shows up walking beside him. The robed man doesn't say a word, doesn't even glance in the hunter's direction. Just a silent, unsettling presence. Now, fast forward to paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren. The hunter reaches out to them, feeling the need for some supernatural expertise. Ed and Lorraine follow the hunter into the woods. Lo and behold, they confirm that the strange object is no ordinary artifact. It's an idol used in satanic rituals. So they decide to bring it back to the occult museum. Within just a couple days, though, things got even weirder. Ed finds Lorraine curled up in a fetal position in their driveway. She's completely unresponsive, and it's baffling even to the doctors who tend to her. Ed claimed it was the work of the cloaked figure, a supposed satanic high priest. According to him, this figure sent a warning message by unleashing some mysterious force upon Lorraine. And at number 9 is the mirror. In this story posted to Reddit by user Coffee and Jesus 1986, she tells of a mirror that seemed to bring misfortune to her family wherever they went. She writes, "We had a mirror. I have no idea where we got it. It was fine before we moved, but when moving from our first apartment, a friend who dropped it and cracked it ended up with prostate cancer. We moved it with the crack still in it and hung it up. Everything went wrong. I had a miscarriage. My husband lost his job. I got sick. We decided to pack up and move. Yet again, everything went wrong. Miscarriage. Lost three family members. It was horrible. Final place we moved with it, hung it up, ended up being a cockroach motel. And yet again, everything went wrong. It was like bad luck kept following us. Got rid of that blasted mirror and half our roach infested belongings. No problems, six years and counting. I haven't told anyone about that stupid mirror. It was bad luck and nobody can convince me otherwise. Interesting story. As for the mirror having belonged to an evil person, we don't really know that as she didn't know where they got the mirror, but if you do believe in cursed objects, certainly seems like this mirror falls under that category and cursed objects are rarely a sign of a friend friendly original owner. Number 8, the Codex Gigas. The Codex Gigas, also known as the Devil's Bible, is a gigantic manuscript believed to have been penned between 1204 and 1230, currently housed in Sweden's National Library since 1768. This ancient book is a hefty compilation of the Old and New Testaments of the Bible, as well as a trove of other knowledge from its time. But what makes it infamous is its association with magic spells and a striking image of the devil leading to a widespread belief in a curse surrounding the book. According to legend, the Codex Gigas was supposedly written by a monk who found himself facing a death sentence after breaking his vows. In a desperate attempt to save his life, the monk purportedly struck a deal with the devil. The task the monk was to complete was seemingly impossible. He had to transcribe all of human knowledge in a single night. With the devil's assistance, the monk accomplished this Herculean feat, but the cost? His own soul. Of course, the demonic portrait featured in the Codex Gigas is said to be the devil's signature, or possibly a tribute to the devil drawn by the monk himself. This book is believed to hold a curse to this very day, with stories circulating the misfortune befalls those who possess or interact with it. Next up on the list, we have the cursed phone number. So, this is a peculiar story linked to the Belgian phone number 359 888 888. 888. This number was active for 10 years before being disconnected. The number passed through the hands of three successive owners, and all of them met on timely deaths. The initial owner got cancer, and the subsequent two owners both died as a result of gun violence. The streak of untimely deaths actually caused the Bulgarian mobile phone company to suspend the use of the phone number, and that part is much stranger to me than the coincidental deaths. And at number six is the cursed car. So either the car in this story was cursed by some malevolent spirit who really wanted to harm whoever was driving it, or the car just wanted to end it. You be the judge after you hear the story. Undead Gorgeous posted this story to Reddit, writing the following. My 
My mom had a red Camaro. Yes, Christine jokes were made. That was literally cursed. Someone crossed three lanes of traffic and hit her while she was driving. She fixes it. Someone else driving the wrong way down a one-way street hits her dead on. She gets it fixed again. Her sister borrows it, parks it outside a 7-Eleven and garbage truck backs into it. Smashes the whole back end. She gets it fixed again. Mind you, this is the third time in six months. Driving it home from the shop, someone runs a red light and smashes into the side of it. She gives up and sells it to a friend. The friend takes it into a car wash, the car wash malfunctions, and the whole front end gets crushed slash partially impaled by a piece of machinery. Friend wins a lawsuit and scraps the car, ending the cycle. At our number five spot is the Doll of Shadows. This is another supposedly cursed item that was housed at the Warren Occult Museum. Unlike a lot of items said to be cursed that look kind of innocuous until you hear the story behind them, this thing doesn't do a great great job of hiding the fact that it's evil. The individual who put this thing together didn't have much of a taste for the subtle. It seemed like they were really leaning into the whole evil thing and you know what? I'm into it. Sure, sometimes less is more, but sometimes more. Is more. The story begins with two unsuspecting doll collectors who, intrigued by this grotesque creation, acquired it from a dealer at an eerily low cost. Little did they know, they were inviting something malevolent into their lives. On the first night, both collectors woke up with inexplicable scratches on their bodies, but that was just the beginning. The real terror struck on the following night when they shared the exact same nightmare, and they'd awoken up to find even worse scratch marks on their bodies. They turned to the renowned paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren for help. They determined that the doll was a conduit for something more sinister. The doll's malevolence extended beyond the realm of dreams, causing physical harm to those unfortunate enough to cross its path. Ed Warren famously stated that the Doll of Shadows had been known to stop people's hearts while trapped in the nightmares it conjured. Next up on the list we have the Clown Doll. In 1966, a man in California stumbled upon a creepy clown doll at a collector's sale. The collector practically forced it into the guy's hands, blabbering about needing to get rid of the thing. It supposedly belonged to a man who had taken the life of his own mother. Why someone would want to bring something like that into their house, regardless of any paranormal beliefs, uh, is beyond me, but I digress. Weird stuff started happening in the guy's place. The doll's eyes seemed to track him, and the air around it just felt off. One night, he could have sworn he heard faint laughter coming from his living room where the doll was displayed. Of course, he was the only one home, and stuff like this just kept happening. He'd find things sitting in places he didn't remember leaving them and when he had friends over they would describe having an eerie vibe about the doll as well. Even his dog, usually fearless, refused to go near the thing. Sleep became a luxury as he'd wake up hearing that same slight laughter from the living room. Was it just part of a nightmare? Was there actually something chuckling in his living room in the middle of the night? He didn't want to wait to find out. Enough was enough and he chucked the thing out with the trash the very next morning. In at number two, we have the horrendously awful paintings by one of the most despicable monsters to ever waddle the face of the earth, John Wayne Gacy. If you don't know who John Wayne Gacy is, uh, you're probably new to this channel, first off, but if evil truly does exist, I'll just say this guy was a perfect example. He was sentenced to death for his crimes in 1980, and while on death row, he decided he'd take up a new hobby painting. A number of his pieces can be found online, but his most well-known work is his Pogo the Clown painting, which is a self-portrait of sorts. When uh, Gacy wasn't committing his disgusting acts, he worked part-time as a clown. I, I know that there are good, hard-working, decent clowns out there trying to eke out a living, putting smiles on faces, uh, but the whole Gacy thing really doesn't help make clowns seem any less frightening, and neither does this awful painting. And we're finishing off the list with a tale from Reddit once again, I'm going to call The Quilt. The story was posted by Mom Donger, who wrote, hijacking my SO story since he doesn't have a Reddit. His mom bought an old quilt at a flea market. It was a nice one, handmade and dirt cheap. She put it in the guest room, which was pretty much the dog's room at that time. They loved to go in there to play, nap, etc. As soon as the quilt was put in there, they stopped going in. They would stand in the doorway and growl and bark, something that's very out of character for both of them. Things would also fly off the shelves. You would put something up 
and then find it halfway across the room. Sometimes you could hear banging on the walls. One night, they had my SO's grandmother over. She had a bad back, so he gave her his bed since it was a better mattress. He slept in the guest room with the quilt. The next morning, he woke up completely covered in scratches. His mother eventually had a dream where her grandmother appeared by her bedside and woke her up. She told her, get rid of the quilt. You need to get rid of it now. Next morning, she woke up and threw it away. Stuff stopped flying off the walls, dogs returned to normal, never had a problem since. Though sometimes the antique radio turns on by itself. <laughs>